Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel, Crafty Concepts with Erin. I've got the September 2023 Stamp of the Month Thoughtful Tokens. It's so pretty. I created some cards with this and I love how they turn out and I just had to share them with you. So we're going to recreate those today. And stay tuned to the very end because I will show you how you can use these same techniques and ideas for scrapbooking as well. So stay tuned for that. I have Distress Oxide Peacock Feathers and Black Soot. I love black and turquoise. If you want to use maybe Villainous Potion, I thought about this one or uh, with the black or pink and black, orange and black. You can do any color combination you like. I chose the Distress Oxides because they're going to work well for the technique we're doing today. I also have the uh, piece of thin acetate it's plastic packaging it's garbage but i like to save this and recycle it for projects like this and you also need a little spray pen to uh, add some water to your project i've got the all-purpose mat here anytime i'm doing anything messy this protects my desk and it cleans up really easily for the first card, I have a white daisy panel. This is just plain cardstock. It's not watercolor paper or anything of that nature. And it is four by five and a quarter. And again, that's just plain paper. We are going to start by inking up a little bit of the peacock feathers on our mat. There's dog hair, nice. If you got pets, you just know how it goes, right? So let's go ahead and spray just a little bit of water in this. You can always add more if you need to. And then we are going to do a little ink smushing with our plastic packaging. Now I'm going to be creating kind of a frame with this. So you can kind of blot it off on a clean area of your mat, but I just want to go around the outside. I, I don't want it solid. So I'm going to be a little bit intentional with where I am putting this uh, splatter and just again, creating kind of a frame around the outside of the card. And actually I'm gonna leave this area open on the left to have a little bit of white space in there. So I'm being a little bit careful. I can always go back and add some more. And it's kind of fun because no card panel is going to end up the same, right? You're gonna get a little bit different look each time you do this because the splatters are very, you know, organic and they land where they land, right? So I think that is looking pretty good for now. Let me just set this in a clean area. Actually, I lied. Let's add some more color. I want that a little bit further up because I'm going to be layering some black soot distress oxide over it. And we want more of this turquoise to show. So I am going to just reach that in a little bit further from the edge. I'm trying to follow my example cards. So that makes it a bit more challenging trying to get them identical. Now I don't want to waste this. So I have an extra card panel here and I am going to just kind of pick up this uh, color here on my mat and we'll get another project out of that one. So you can always just rather than wipe it up and dispose of it in a paper towel, why not just make a second background? You just never know what you're going to get here. Let's uh, let's just go right in the middle on this one. Why not? Let's walk on the wild side here. Okay, I'll set that aside. When layering Distress Oxide inks, you want to dry it in between layers. And I have my heat gun here. I'm moving back and forth from the front to the back, flipping it over. Doing this kind of helps prevent curling. It'll warp a little bit, but then flipping it over and blowing it from the other side will straighten it back out. Now I am going to create a little halo of color. I've got my sp 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 <laughs> wow. sponge blending foam, and I am covering up, darkening the edge, covering up some of that splatter so it will be more solid around the edge and then get more splattery as it moves towards the center of the card. You can see where the all-purpose mat is coming in handy. I'd have quite the mess on my desk if I did not have that underneath. So I'm going to wipe that up and then we will repeat the process with the black soot. I don't want nearly as many splatters, just a little bit with the black. 
The beginning of September, fellow Creative Design Team members Chelsea, Julie, and Janice all collaborated, bringing you ideas to use this stamp set. I was hoping to kind of play along, but I didn't get my projects done in time, so I am sharing them with you now. But it was so inspiring. If you have not watched all their videos, I highly recommend it. It was so neat to see how so many different looks can come from one stamp set. The Thoughtful Token stamp is an exclusive stamp for the month of September. Every month, Close to My Heart features a different stamp of the month, and it's a promotional stamp. If you're one of my VIPs, you can get it for free with your purchase. If you're not a VIP, you can get it for $5. So it's a great deal either way. I am repeating the process just like we did with the peacock feathers. I added a little bit of splattering and now I am just darkening up the corners, being careful not to go too far in. We don't want to cover up all of that splatter and that pretty peacock feathers color. So just adding a little like vignette of the black hair, just a little bit over here, and then we can start the collage stamping. So that looks pretty cool all on its own. And let's go ahead and pull out our stamped images here. We're going to use quite a few of these. So I've got my Versamat, I'm flipping it over so we have the spongy side and I'm sliding it under. That's going to give me some better stamped impressions, having that foam cushion, but the all-purpose mat's going to protect my Versamat because I don't wanna get ink right on the Versamat itself. I'm gonna pull off a couple of these linear stamps and just mount them to the acrylic blocks here. And then actually, you know what? I don't want that one. I'm gonna use archival black instead. This little block isn't quite big enough. So I'm gonna just swap back and forth on it and use this block for both of these longer stamps. I am going to use this kind of flourish off the edge so it's just kind of peeking onto it creating a little border in that spot we left open and now this is like a postage stamp and this is going to go right up at the top and we're going to stamp this a couple times so i want it going about hmm, let me wipe that up real quick about three quarters of the way over and then I'll ink it up again, and then this time I'm gonna bump it back so it's only going a little bit less than half. So this is fun, you can just get creative here. There's no right or wrong way to collage these stamps. That's a little corner bracket, so I thought it would look nice in the corner there. Now there's a couple different sentiments on here. This one says, thank you. There's also a happy birthday. I'm going to stamp that in full strength and then just keep stamping it in first, second, and third generation. Now I'm gonna add a little bit above so we'll stamp off on some cardstock and then stamp third, the third generation right onto the card just to create a little collage of the word thank you. This one here says happy birthday, but I just want the happy portion of this. This kind of has the junk journal feel to it or an art journal feel. I've only inked up the word happy. They're far enough apart, apart to where I don't need to mask off the word birthday. For the next element, I am going to use my stamp positioner because I really want to make sure I get a good impression with this one. There's a lot of details. I'm going to use this later without the stamp positioner, but I just want to do it on this card to make sure everything turns out perfectly because if it doesn't i can ink it up and stamp it a second time this is so pretty it's like a kind of a film film reel circle with a butterfly and text over it there's so much detail in this one little stamp a couple little like leaves it's gorgeous so that looks pretty good now we can play around with some shimmer brush. These things are so fun. Now I want this to be pretty darn juicy. So I'm squeezing it out, making sure that the brush tip is very saturated. And I am going to drip it down from the top here. I'm actually gonna draw little drip lines and then I'm gonna squeeze towards the top and that way they'll kind of drip down those lines that I already painted on. I'll hold this up for you a little bit more in a moment so you can see. And then let's drip down from the butterfly also. I like to do things in odd numbers, so I'm gonna have three little drippy marks here. You can skip this step if you want to, but the shimmer brush will dry and leave all of this gorgeous shimmery goodness behind. It's so pretty. So I'm just kind of playing around. Maybe we'll do a little down here in this corner. 
I did let that dry and now I am adhering it to a base of black cardstock. So we get that nice clean defined edge all the way around the card and then we will adhere it to an A2 card base. Let me make sure that is on there straight. Now I have a pre-scored card base. This is from the White Envelopes and Cards value pack. I love to keep those in my craft room. They just make it a lot easier to grab and go. We will adhere this and then I cut it so we have just a little bit of that white border peeking out. I think that looks nice and sharp. Now this is the color of the year. This is Journey sequins and there are a collection of kind of turquoisey uh, sequins in here mixed in with some white. Some are kind of translucent. It's a really nice mix. So I'm going to add a little bit of sparkle. I'm using my wax pickup tool. You sharpen this when it loses its stickiness and it's actually twice as long. I cut it in half. I'm going to glue these down. I like to use micro glue dots, but I'm running low. So this white Tombow glue has kind of a flex to it when it dries. So it does work well for sequins because if you use a stiff glue with no give, they will pop off if the card flexes, which it's highly likely to do in the mail. So you want to use that white glue. Let me hold this up so you can get a look at that. Here is the first one I made. They came out pretty similar, not identical, but pretty darn close. So for the next card, we're going to use a slimline base. Now I have this film strip on my block already, and I am going to lengthen this. I want it longer. So I'm actually not going to use the whole image. I am only inking up to where it's going to be hidden by my sentiment. That way, if I don't join them up perfectly, no one will ever know. I'm cleaning that off, making sure there's no ink on it. And we're gonna ink up the other half a little bit more and then line these up. And the reason why I'm doing, again, did it this way is because I want it longer than the actual stamp was. So that looks pretty good. Now we're using this little flourish one here. I'm sticking with the Peacock Feathers ink and then we'll go maybe right about here Again, we're just kind of creating a collage of these stamp images. This is really fun to do. I'm moving back to the black ink, and this one is kind of a frame with a little bit of text inside of the frame. So we'll get that nice and uh, saturated with the ink, and we'll put this one towards the top here, overlapping our film strip just a bit. These stamp images kind of have a vintage old world feel to them. So I thought they would lend themselves well to some of my Italy photos. So the scrapbook I'm going to be creating for you here in just a moment is going to be um, of some photos from my trip. Now, this is the Dream Maker stamp set. This is retired. It was a special, but I just grabbed this tiny little splatter stamp. So I know this was quite popular. So if you have this in your collection, I just want to show you that as well where it came from. I'm adding just a little bit of this black splatter throughout the pattern we've created here. And I actually want to go back to my little film, or not film strip, the postage stamp here. And we're going to ink that up in peacock feathers and stamp it across. And you know what? I'm going to check that because I don't know. I used it with black ink and I was a little bit worried it wasn't clean, but it's good. So we'll stamp that one. And then I want it peeking out the other side. So I'm going to mask that off. Again, that's where my sentiment's going to join in the middle. So it's going to cover anything that looks kind of haphazard. I'm going to mat this on black. So I cut a circle for my sentiment because why not? Why waste that paper? You're not going to see it back there. So I just thought it'd be a good use of it. We're doing the same little black border. I've got a little circle here and I grabbed a sentiment from my sentiment collection. This one says, thanks for everything. And I stamp that with the peacock feathers and then just am going to highlight it with this black circle here. Now I do want to pop that up with just a little bit of thin 3D foam tape. This is thinner. It is not a whole lot of dimension, but it does make it a little bit easier to send through the mail. So it's pretty handy for cards. My foam tape is sticking out. Let me trim that off. Then we'll cover up all of our stamping chaos in the middle there. Now I have a slimline base pre-scored. They, they come in a value pack also. 
we'll adhere this whole panel to our slim line. So again, we have the black and the white, and this one's a little bit cleaner. Let me show you, actually, let's put some sequins on here, and then I'll show you my first card because it's a little bit different. So let's just get some of these kind of cascading down our stamping here. This pickup tool is pretty handy and it lasts a very long time too. Now on my first card, I have a second butterfly. So I fussy cut that butterfly from the circle image with the butterfly and then just added that up top. And I think I like it better with the second butterfly. Okay, let's get to the scrapbook layout. I have a sheet of white daisy cardstock and vintage photo distress oxide. I'm using my blending tool to create just kind of some color, like a triangular shape of color in this corner. And then we will repeat the process on the diagonal corner. This layout was 100% inspired by Janice Gilhui. And again, I have her video listed in the description box below. She used this Thoughtful Tokens stamp set and did some stamping, background stamping on a sheet of white daisy. And she actually did it across a double page layout. It's so pretty. If you haven't seen her video, I highly recommend you go check it out. But I am borrowing Janice's idea. Let's. Mine's gonna look a little different, but the concept is the same. So I'm using the same vintage photo ink and using it for stamping. And we're going to just kind of get messy. It's going to look weird, but it'll all come together in the end. So hang with me. This is the frame stamp with the text and there's a little bit of a botanical element to it as well. I'm going to switch to the film strip and then I'm just kind of playing around. I really don't have, basically what I'm doing in one corner, I'm gonna do it in the top corner. So it's gonna be kind of a mirror image. So now we'll go up over here and I'm starting with that kind of far over and we're following that diagonal wash of color. So I'm kind of bumping in my stamped images and I'm stamping, you know, directly first generation and then I'll stamp it again second generation without re-inking it. So you get like a lighter version of the same color. Let's add a couple more of these frames. See, right now it's looking pretty weird, but keep the faith. I think you'll like it in the end. Maybe one more of this little frame image down here, and then we can switch to the circle with the butterfly. So that one's gonna go right about here. Now, this I got from Janice. I'm only inking up a portion of it, and then we're gonna stamp it off the edge. So you're not gonna see the butterfly. So it gives that, you're using that same circle image and repeating that elsewhere without it being super matchy matchy the whole time. So again, whatever I'm doing in the lower corner, I'm doing up in the upper corner. So we'll go just partial to avoid that butterfly. And then let's do one up on the top section, kind of coming in from the top. Now I'm going to use that postage kind of cancellation thing, like it's been hand stamped by the post office. So the, this one I want in second generation. So I'm gonna ink it up, stamp it off on my scratch paper, and then write onto my layout, and then even a third time for third generation ink. So again, we're following that triangular shape. So I'm pulling it in each time to adjust the length of this little postage stamp. And then when we're done stamping, we're gonna blend it all together with a little bit of the ink just to kind of smooth it out. And I'm gonna darken the very, very corner. And then I didn't quite have this color far enough up, so I can just extend it to coordinate with my stamping. And just like the cards, you could do this with any color. I chose Distress Oxide just because that's what I made the cards with, and it does blend so beautifully, so it lends itself well to this style. But really, you could do this with any color. I did trim this paper down, so we have about an eighth of an inch of black cardstock showing around the edge. I have two photos. This is a delicious macchiato in Siena, Italy, and then this cute little dog. I will tell you more about what this dog was doing and the significance of this story as we put this layout together. But I'm thinking kind of like this. Now, I want to put some pattern paper behind these, so I cut down this pattern paper. It's got this kind of black and white speckly on one side and this awesome stripe on this side. And it is just going to 
really pull all of this together and make these photos pop. This is from the Current Mixing Collection. These mix-ins go along with the Good Life Collection as well as the um, Christmas Collection in the current catalog and I love them because they're just great neutral patterns. They are the same as tone on both sides. So this is black and white, but you get a different pattern. This one I already cut into that for a different project, but it's wood grain. And then you get this nice little pattern on the opposite side. And you can just kind of see how they are the same color palette, but you have options. So these are just great and they always can be mixed and matched with other paper collections. I love this one, but yeah just great great neutrals but I thought this black and white would be really fun so I cut this one down let me actually give you the measurements there this one is sorry about that fly buzzing around seven inches by eight and a half I want more paper layers so I have this piece of toffee and I thought well let's see if we can make this work that's kind of boring let's spice this up a little bit I have this stamp it's no longer available but it's called coffee helps and there's actually look at all these goodies I have in here left over from other projects I think I can use some of these they're so cute so there's a little coffee cup and then that that one the color doesn't match so we don't want that one now there's a couple coffee beans on here. Now they're super tiny, but if we cluster them together, we can make our own coffee bean pattern paper. So I'm gonna stamp off the edge. So I'm gonna bring in my all purpose mat and let's just stick with the color scheme and go with vintage photo. Now just the top of this is showing. So we just need to focus on that area. So there are two beans together. And as I mentioned, that's kind of small, but if you stamp a bunch in a cluster, you can make like a bigger pattern on your paper. Hopefully that's making sense. So I'm rotating my little beans each time and I'm stamping them a couple times to make each cluster. You could just spread out, like stamp your two beans and then move away and stamp another two beans, but I kind of like the bigger clusters. So that's just a fun way you can use them. This is yet another reason why I love my stamp collection. I can make the perfect pattern paper in the perfect color. I think that'll do it. So let's blend on the, oh no, that's black. Shoot, I grabbed the wrong foam brush. Let me grab the uh, vintage photo and we'll finish just kind of going around the edge here. And I want to kind of, oops, I roughed up the corner. Well, let's embrace that too. We'll just roll it up and make it look old and kind of tattered. And then we'll go over that black area and kind of blend that out just a little bit. And let's go a little bit on the pattern too moment of truth here. Let's slide this behind our photos and see how that looks. Oh, it's cute. I think that's really fun. Definitely looks better than the plain paper. I think we can go ahead and scooch this out of the way now and start the embellishing process. These are so cute. It says, today's good mood is brought to you by coffee. I'm going to mat that on a black circle and then we can use this little coffee cup up here to create an embellishment cluster. I also have this tag. There's nothing better than a good friend except a good friend with coffee. And I made this by mixing two different stamp sets. So this is called um, Eat Chocolate. It's also retired, but this is what it says. There's nothing better than a good friend except a good friend with chocolate. So I masked off the word chocolate with a little post-it tape, stamped it, and then I used this one. I don't need an inspirational quote. I need coffee. So I masked off the top of it and just inked up the word coffee to mix the two together and make my own tag. So that is always a way to get more use out of your stamps by masking and mixing and matching them like that. I tied a little bow from some um, ribbon there. This feels a little text heavy. I'm actually going to adhere this down and then maybe try to have just the top part of it showing because we have, I still have a title too. So we have a lot of text on here. So we could just kind of hide some of that in today's good mood. And then, you know, kind of you know, is brought to you by coffee. It's kind of implied with the embellishments. So I kind of like that. Now for my title, I created this with the print and cut feature over in Cricut Design Space. I have a video walking you through this step by step. I will leave that linked in the description box below. But I wanted it to say the perfect blend, which I got the idea for that title by looking at coffee layouts on Pinterest. A lot of them would say the perfect blend. And I thought, you know what? That's perfect because dogs and coffee are the perfect blend. So I actually added that in here, coffee and dogs, 
the perfect blend. And I'm gonna put this right underneath here. This is also a Cricut cut. It is Cricut Access. I'm trying it out for a bit, so to see if I use it enough to warrant um, having a subscription to Cricut. But yeah, I do like this little coffee cup and how it kind of frames in the photo there. I printed my journaling out on the Avery Clear shipping labels and I get this on Amazon. It's acid free, it's non-yellowing. I have used this quite a bit and I'm a big fan. I learned about it from um, Hiba over at My Little Journal. And I do have a journaling tips video. It's 10 and a half ways to um, you know, add journaling to your layouts. And if you have not seen that, I do, that's where I first introduced this. But yes, it's really, really handy because it's clear and you can, you know, use it over pattern paper and things like that. And it'll allow that uh, pattern to show through. I will just go ahead and read the journaling to you as I hear this. My family was sleeping soundly, so I wandered along the cobblestone streets of Siena in search of coffee. I did not have to venture far and found a cute cafe with delicious pastries adorning the glass cabinets. I ordered a macchiato and found a nearby table. Noticing this little poodle, I observed him wandering from customer to customer, looking for a tasty treat and a good scratch. I assumed he belonged to someone in the cafe, but discovered he was there on his own. Apparently, he is a frequent visitor. I quite enjoyed his company and thought what could be better than coffee with a sweet dog. After all, it is the perfect blend. As you can see, I'm adding a few little black chipboard shapes. These are from the Little Things collection from my stash. This says, love this, and it's kind of cut out. Um, so I need it on a light background. What if we cut some white paper, then we can have more places we can move this, because I certainly did love this. Some of you may not like uh, dogs wandering in your cafe, but personally, I thought it was great, and it really made me happy, because I was missing my dogs at home. And he was quite good-natured. I mean, he did didn't jump up or bark. He just kind of wandered around and looked at you with his pleading little eyes. And he was so sweet. You know what? I like this here after all. So there is the finished result. How cool is all that gorgeous stamping? So thank you so much, Janice, for your creative mind uh, inspiring this project. And then let me bring my cards back in. And everything I use to create this layout can be found in the description box below the video, along with the videos my friends did featuring this stamp set. So thank you so much for watching. Give this video a big thumbs up and I will see you very soon here on YouTube. YouTube.